show him that I may also know the power of his resurrection. There is something about it. It has to do with your entire destiny. The knowledge of it, the power of his resurrection has a lot to do with your destiny. Knowing what his death and resurrection offers has a lot to do with your status. It has a lot to do with your placement. It has a lot to do with your victory in life. Lord, open my eyes this morning to see what the power of your resurrection carries for me. Open my eyes today to see what the power of your resurrection offers me. Open my eyes today to see. We are still exploring this great theme, the power of his resurrection. In the first service, we looked at how that power gives us victory over sin. In the second service, we talk about that power as power over Satan. And in this service, we'll be looking at the resurrection power in the area of sickness, disease, and death. Power over sickness, disease, and death. I am he that was dead, and behold, I'm alive, and I live forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. When he came out of the grave, he took absolute command. Satan lost it all and Jesus got it all. Hallelujah. In his resurrection, we have power over sickness, disease, and death. Because when he died, we were buried together with him. And when he rose, we were raised together with him. So by his resurrection, we took on new life. Because what you bear is not what comes out. It's a new one that comes out. Amen? So we came out with a new body when we were raised together with him. And that makes a world of difference. You should get at that understanding. It will destroy sickness and disease in your body and make you enjoy longevity as a lifestyle. Amen? I was sharing a story with you that my old man lost one of his brothers and this man was 80 years in December. And then when my old man was talking about him, he said, he's a young man. He's a young man. He was just 80 last December. <laughs> he said, and when I was laughing, he said, ah, what are you laughing for? He's a young man. He said, look, in the family, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one is two years older than him. This one is one year older than him. He's the same age group with this one, this one, this one. But I am, his fifth senior sister is still junior to me. Amen. When, when you catch what I'm talking about, at 80 they will still call you a young man. Amen. Amen. Because the man, Caleb, said, 40 years ago I was up here. And it's 40 years after. I have not lost any bit of my strength. He said, as I was 40 years ago, so I am now both to go to war and to fight. Praise God. In his resurrection, we have power over sickness, disease, and death. Now, let's see how that was proved practically here when he got up. Matthew chapter 27, and we start to read from verse 50. Now, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, did what? Yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twin. From the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints, many what? Bodies, underlying bodies, many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection. They came out of the grave after his resurrection. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Mm -hmm. 
bodies. Come and say bodies. Many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So at his resurrections, our bodies must rise. Come and say, I hear. And they came out of the graves. Because he rose, your bodies must rise. Not just your spirit, your bodies. He said, many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out after his resurrection and appeared unto many. They arose, they came out, and they appeared on the streets. The graves were opened. So at his resurrection, the graves of sickness, the graves of disease, the graves of death, which hold the bodies to ransom, were opened. And many bodies, bodies, flesh and blood, which had died, which slept, they arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and appeared unto many. Their bodies rose. I see your bodies rise. I see every dead thing in your body take on life today. Many bodies, many bodies, many bodies of the saints that slept arose and came out after his resurrection. That means the resurrection power, the resurrection spirit has power to cause your mortal body to rise. Your mortal body, it has power to destroy any virus. It has power to destroy any, every form of cancer. It has power to cause your liver that is dying to rise. It has power to destroy that heart disease and inject life into it. It has power to affect your productive system and bring life into it. Many bodies. Very important. He did not just rise from the dead to sanctify our spirit, to save our soul. He rose from the dead to also save our bodies. Because you rose with him, you now carry a resurrected body, immune to sickness and disease, superior to the traps of death. Come and see, I hear now. Now, this is very important because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Many Christians exhibit lots of inferiority complex. But it should be in the contrary. You should, you should exhibit superiority complex. Because that's where he has put you by grace. By his resurrection, you must not suffer bodily frustration anymore. Bodily oppression must lose its grief from you because you were raised up together with him. Come and say, I hear. That's very important. Very important. In Romans chapter 8, I want to look at this. Talking about the quickening of our mortal body, the making alive of our mortal body. Chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit, capital letter S, symbolizing the power of God, of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Your physical body can be quickened. Life can be infused and injected into it. Hello? There was a plague sometimes in South Africa many years ago during the times of John G. Lake. And there were these forms that come from people's mouth and when you encounter that form, you are a dead man. Now he put his finger 
out there and took the foam. When they put that under the microscope, all the viruses were dead. Why he has a new body, has another body. Come and say, another body. That is the body you have. You should carry that mentality. That you have a resurrected body. A resurrected body. When Mary was going to touch you, I said, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Because I carry a new body now. You carry a new body where sickness can survive. Where disease can survive. We are cancer can survive. We are HIV can survive. We are leukemia can survive. You carry a new body. He said that spirit will quicken your mortal body. It will get you immune to sickness, to disease and death. Come and say, help me, Lord. It is also his resurrection power. It delivers from oppressions of sickness, disease and death. If that spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is in you, he said, he will quicken your mortal body by that spirit which dwells in you. So you carry a quickened body. A body that is su su supernaturally alive. So you carry the divine nature in your mortal system. That makes you a touch me not to sickness, disease, and death. Come and say, I hear. I hear. Say it loud, I hear. I hear. Now that's very important. Please get that fact very well. And that's why I know between this Easter and the next one, you won't smell sickness. Yeah. You won't smell disease. Yeah. You won't see pains. Yeah. You won't suffer aches. Yeah. Because you carry a quickened body. Come and say, quickened body. You carry a quickened body. That mentality will help you be in total control of every harassment of doctor's reports. Hello? You carry a quickened body. A body that is made alive by the resurrection power. Made alive by the resurrection power. That's very important. Say with me, I carry a quickened body. Immune to sickness and disease. He did not only save my soul. He is also the savior of my body. He is also the savior of my body. He is also the savior of my body. And by his spirit that dwells in me. My body is immune to sickness and disease. My body is immune to death. By his spirit that dwells in me. By his spirit that dwells in me. By his spirit that dwells in me. I carry the resurrection power on my inside. I cannot be a victim of oppression of the devil. I have a quickened body. I have a body that is alive. I have a body that is alive. I shall no more suffer sickness or disease or be a victim of death. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I'd like you to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. But ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. Come and say with me, I'm bought with a price. Body, soul, and spirit. Because I've been bought with a price, my body must glorify God. And because sickness does not glorify him, disease does not glorify him, they cannot survive in my body anymore. I must glorify God in my body. I must glorify God in my body. With divine health, with strength, with longevity, I must glorify God in my body. I have been bought with a price. Now he, he, he paid the price of his life 
to rescue you and me from the pit of sin, sickness, disease, and death. He is not only the savior of your soul, he is also the savior of your body. Because you carry the resurrection power on your inside, you must live a resurrected life. And a resurrected life is sickness free and disease free. That's your portion from today. Amen. That's your portion from today. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Come and say, savior of the body. Is the savior of the body. Is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. That's why when he went to the grave, he did not come out only with the spirit. He came out also with his body. Come and say, he came out with his body. He said, touch me. Hallelujah. He has we have to touch. He said, put your finger here. I came out bodily. He came out bodily. You are coming out bodily from henceforth. Yeah. I said, you are coming out bodily from henceforth. Yeah. I said, you are coming out bodily from henceforth. Yeah. After his resurrection, all the bodies of the saints that slept rose. Your body is rising from today. Amen. They came out of the graves. You are out of your graves today. Amen. All this, I normally have headache. It's not normal. Headache is not normal. In fact, psychology says headache is a state of disorder. It's a state of what? Disorder. Pain. Pain is a product of disorder. It's disorder that creates pain. So it is not normal to have headache. It is not normal to have backache. It's not normal to be feeling one kind and feeling another kind. It's not. It's not normal. I mean, it's not normal to be at to be held down by sickness. It is not normal. Refuse that mentality. It is not normal. Jesus came through here. No sickness, no pain one day. It's not recorded anywhere. You are not created a specimen. You don't live like one. From this day, your body will glorify God. Amen. 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 I'd like you to say with me, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Sickness cannot survive in my body. Disease cannot survive in my body. Death cannot have its way in my body. Death cannot have its way in my body. Amen. 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 Now you see, in scripture, the Bible said, I will not have to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep. That are what? And the Bible said, they that sleep, sleep at night. You don't say good night at 2 p.m., do you? So when you disappear at the age of 40, that's afternoon. That's what? You don't say good night in the afternoon. So as far as God is concerned, until night, you are not qualified to say good night. He said, they that sleep, do what? Sleep at night. They sleep at when? They sleep at night. They sleep at night. They sleep at night. Even 70 is only evening. Is 7 p.m. not evening in your town? Is that night? Even 70 is evening. Shout Hallelujah. 70s evening. So now say good night at 12 noon. It's a bad language. You won't say good night in the afternoon. You won't say good night in the afternoon. You won't say good night in the afternoon. For they that sleep, sleep at night. Now, minor sickness and disease. What should a man sleep for at 12 noon? So, sickness and disease, they are the beds of death. So, if you can deal with sickness and disease, you have earned longevity. Come and say, help me, Lord. Lord. Say, Lord, help me, Lord. Lord. Now, listen to me. This is how to stand there. 
The spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And because he dwells in me, he has a mission to quicken my mortal body. To quicken means to fortify, to reinforce, to defend, to make alive, to immune. That means your body is no feed for the devil. Your body is no meat for the enemy. So you can stand strong on that. Something is on my inside that sickness cannot handle. Something is on my inside that disease cannot handle. Something is on my inside that death cannot threaten. Something is on your inside. The spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead is in you. And because that spirit is in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. Amen? This is the end of side A. Please turn your cassette to side B. I am going to cry.